He's on the same community committee as me. He has a lovely feisty mum, who is my friend. And lastly, he makes delicious but absolutely lethal champagne cocktails. <laughs> Talking of men on committees for a moment, ladies, have you noticed men really never leave behind that stage in play development where they plan and build Lego buildings and roads for their toy cars? Their model is discussed at great length and considered the most appropriate. Well, some of our community group meetings repeatedly reflect this phenomenon. Eventually, one of the ladies has to remind them that silent witness is on at nine o'clock or we would never get on with it. <laughs> to be honest, John is not like that. He's more interested in houses and where they are to go. Not just people's houses, but chickens' houses too. <laughs> The chickens at his place have a nice, although short life, in most aesthetically pleasing houses. They can run around with their friends in lots of outdoor space in a rural setting. Just like the new Lornelskirk houses planned for people. Except people have cars, so they need roads. Back to men play again. As a child, I was brought up in Fife. My dad had hens at the bottom of the garden. They supplied us daily with fresh eggs. But the problem was when they went off the lake. Unfortunately, unable to do the deed himself, my dad asked the local butcher to deal with their dispatching. Imagine my dismay when I went to the butcher shop next time with my mum. After wielding his fleshing knife through the stewing steak, the butcher leaned over the counter and said, Hello, hen, what can I do for you today? <laughs> Lots of men called women hen in those days. Some men called their girlfriends their bird. Women who liked a bit of choice were called flighty. We are here tonight to celebrate our bard Robert Burns. Now there was a cock of the north. <laughs> if he wasn't the flighty one, I don't know who was. But then, as John told us, men are not good at multitasking, are they? they can't make choices. <laughs> Ladies, our men look after us and care for us even as we age, accepting our little foibles like needing reading glasses, regular hair colour, and going out for lunch with friends weekly. There is one man of our acquaintance who is very concerned about his wife's apparent hearing loss. Bert feared that his wife Peg wasn't hearing as well as she used to and he thought she might need a hearing aid. Not quite sure how to approach her, he called the family doctor to discuss the problem. The doctor told him there is a simple, informal test the husband could perform to give the doctor a better idea about her hearing loss. Here's what you do, said the doctor. Stand about 40 feet away from her and in a normal, conversational speaking tone, see if she hears you. If not, go to 30 feet then 20 feet, and so on until you get a response. That evening, the wife was in the kitchen cooking dinner, and he was in the den. He says to himself, I'm about 40 feet away. Let's see what happens. Then, in a normal tone, he asks, Honey, what's for dinner? No response. <coughs> So the husband moves closer to the kitchen, about 30 feet from his wife, and repeats, Hey, what's for dinner? Still no response. Next, he moves into the dining room where he is about 20 feet from his wife and asks, 
Honey, what's for dinner? Again, he gets no response. So, he walks up to the kitchen door about ten feet away. Honey, what's for dinner? Again, there is no response. So, he walks right up behind her. Peg, what's for dinner? For God's sake, Bert, for the fifth time, it's chicken! <laughs> and drink a toast to the lads. <laughs> to the lads. To the lads. <laughs> mentioned tonight is uh, Burns liking for a, for a dram. He wrote in Scott's drink that Full, food fills the way and keeps us living. The life's no a gift no worth receiving but heavy dragged by pain and grieving. But all by thee, the wheels of life get doing hell screaming with rattling glee. A wonderful poem about the dram. I was brought up in Fetakirn, where we have a distillery, of course, built in 1824, just two minutes after it was legal to distill whiskey, <laughs> we opened in Fetakirn. We produce two million litres a year, and not two million litres per year, and as yet, not one drop has left the village. <laughs> We were in Ebrates before we sat the 11 plus. <laughs>